Yep. Okay, so let's start. So today's topic is, as we mentioned before, it's implementing .NET compile platform with Blazor WebAssembly. It's was hard to pronounce and hard to uh, gain together the topic to fit uh, the, in the uh, PowerPoint template also. So let's start it. So a little bit about agenda. So first we will talk about .NET compile plan platform as overview, why we might want to use it, uh, Roslyn as for code analysis, or maybe you have heard about code DOM and some comparison between those and about dynamic code compilation. And the last topic, but not least, is uh, Blazor WebAssembly and nuances of being new. It's very new uh, framework for front-end development. And I will speak about implementing in real project about it later uh, after the .NET compiled platform. So let's get started. OK, uh, what is Roslyn? Roslyn is uh, Open source .NET uh, compile platform, uh, as stated here. If you used for code, are very excited with it, developing and uh, maintaining it was very hard, and they decided to switch to Roslyn and to develop new compiler platform. It was a very hard process. It took a very long time, and they did it since, uh, I think, 12, uh, uh, 2012 or something around that. Be, uh, and as it stated, it was public uh, announced to be open source in 2018. OK. So why do we might want to use it? Uh, as you can see, it's published on GitHub, and you can uh, come and look at some issues, pull requests, or create you one, and you saw a bug in a new uh, release of uh, Roslyn. And maybe you are experiencing development, uh, a developer, and you might uh, want to share your experience or create a story, and etc. It's very nice for Microsoft to do such thing, because it makes uh, development of such additional things as code analysis for some other frameworks that are developed by community more easier and clearer. Because you, when you are using compiler, uh, you might want to know be, uh, what uh, what is behind the scenes and how it works uh, and how it's located in such folders on, etc. So who and why is already using it? Uh, as I stated on the screen, uh, Rider ID, maybe you are familiar with this. I am a big fan of JetBrains, actually. And they are using it uh, besides uh, Rich Sharper, and they work alongside. So you can see some suggestions from Roslyn also. Uh, Visual Studio works with Roslyn code analysis out of the box. And you, when you switch to the Resharper, it can be active too, and we will speak about that right, uh, later. Uh, what about Resharper? It's a bit a different story because Resharper was developed, uh, started to developing a long uh, before the Rosin was even mentioned in Microsoft team, and it's developed uh, very differently from Rosin. And what JetBrains team said about that is Rosin is great, but we have a technology that we developed, and our team is fine with that. And by current uh, way we are developing Resharper, we doesn't planning to switch to Rosin. And so they stated uh, such a meme on the page when community asked about Rosin, and I think that's a clear position. So why we should use or why is Rosin used? It's extendability. Some specific frameworks are already using it in uh, Rider. For example, here you can see XUnit tests and see the suggestion mark with probe, red probe with uh, Roslyn logo. It's uh, Roslyn suggestion um, uh, for remove parameters on convert something, some comp generation also. It's all developed by Roslyn uh, 
like this. And you can uh, enable it uh, via settings. And that's kind of cool because if you, want, if you are developing some frameworks or some extensions to C Sharp, uh, you may want to use it Rosin because it's open source, it has uh, enough community, and we'll speak uh, about another proxy later. So here's the links if you want to dive deeper. And I think Arthur will uh, upload the presentation to conference, and you might want to see it if you want to. A bit uh, to be a bit of a researcher. So I have, minded, uh, I have mentioned before uh, CodeDom, maybe you are familiar with that. And we have to remind that CodeDom is uh, what developers were using in terms of compiling uh, before Roslink were publicly uh, announced. So CodeDom is nothing but a compiler and it does nothing more about that. So you just uh, put the code and it compiles and you gain the output. It's pretty plain and simple. And just to recap what Microsoft states about it. So it's got them, it's just a pre, uh, precursor to Roslyn. And as I said before, my in my opinion, Condom is simple and plain and nothing more about that. And so if we, if we talk about comparison, Roslyn is a bit bigger, it's newer, it got uh, something more than a just wrapper uh, around CSSXC. It's just a compiler, not uh, just a compiler. It got uh, code analysis tools also, and it is extendable. So if you were writing code down programs to for some support of frameworks or etc., you would like to, if you use using code you would like to write additional uh, Code analyzer by yourself, but if you're using Crossing, you can do it out of the box, and it's just a nicer. So here's some comparison. For example, if we have a parser for Codom, it's syntax tree you are seeing where developing in Visual Studio or uh, Writer ID is just a file that you uh, have written, and it got I I'll emit a also alongside uh, out of the box, whereas Godram just using uh, emission to API and nothing more. And Rosin a bit newer and Godram is a bit older. But also because Godram has a more information to look for and Rosin is newer, it's gone, it's obvious. And as I said before, uh, Godram is simple and plain. And if you want to you, uh, develop a complex solution, Kerlox uh, extensions or compiling, you might want to use Roslyn, not the code down. For code analysis or something else. What I mean uh, in terms of code analysis is that if you have some uh, ambitious uh, exception you might want to turn red or something, etc. You might want to write your, your one uh, yourself, uh, libraries or program to catch that exception. But if Roslyn, if you're using Roslyn, you just go to the syntax tree, catch that ex uh, exception, and go on. It's a way more simple. But if you're using Codom, you can just compile, and if you're if it's if that's your purpose, go on. It's it's nice to use Codom in a way I mentioned. Uh, so, for example, uh, of usage, uh, I got uh, open source project we were developing uh, not a bit ago, and uh, but first I have to ask you: uh, Have you heard about Jupyter? Have you? By the way, feel to. Feel free to ask any questions and interrupt me uh, if you have some suggestions. Anyway, we would have a QA after presentation, so feel free. Okay, looks no one I have heard about Jupyter, but it's not a big deal because Jupyter is just a tool for Python developers to split their work and let me show you a bit of demo. Uh, uh, 
Can you see my screen now? Yep. So let's jump into the Python. I think it's a necessary step because uh, we would dive deeper into compilation terms and I want to get uh, clear with that. So it's a bit loading. So the fighter point is to divide some code in units in queries and to run them separately and gain output also separately. And you want to change your code dynamically or et cetera with funding output uh, as you gain before. So for example, we declare a variable C with equal to five and we want to print that variable and we got five. But if we plus equal to one, sorry, and run it, Oh, sorry. We got it six, but if you run the previous code, it got incremented. So they're separate, but they link it together. And the idea is that you have the output for separate queries, and it's like a deb debugger for complex solution in terms of data science or et cetera. And to be clear, what's what the heck is have a common visit? Uh, maybe should I share the whole screen? Okay. So the project was about uh, switching the experience of Python to C sharp and to switch that you uh, uh interpreter experience to C sharp and .NET. And the only way to achieve that is to use dynamic recompilation and the compiler. So you have to recompile the script you, you got and to pull it together to make the compiler do all necessary work you got to do. And we chose Roslyn to implement the compiler side because it had, as I mentioned before, it got uh, a nice feature about uh, nice to use it. Okay, so the project was uh, as compiler, we use Rosin, it's like a service, and front end we use Blazor, and for REST API, you use Flask. Don't, <laughs> please don't ask me why we use Flask, it's like a requirement or... And what Rosin gives us anyway, so it's main stability, first of all, and it's really scalable, and we use of course, uh, pure.net, uh, when we compile that, uh, we, we got uh, all our process control, uh, we got control all our compiler, and it's that compiler is at Microsoft's sustainability. So we got additional uh, code analysis tools, which CodeDOM doesn't have, a wide range of build options, and it got support of .NET 5 because CodeDOM is older and it's nice to. Uh, approach, built with service approach, so here it doesn't get a separate process built, uh, executed, and it's a nice way to, to build a service or something like that. It gives a more opportunity to you to architect your application or solution, and it's easy for building C -sharp extensions. And let's demonstrate the Muslim compiler, I got a demo. Okay, I will share the screen. Okay, so. Okay, can you see my uh, ID right now? Yes. Okay, so we got a simple script right here for using system and console right now. Let's just say. And we pass the scripts. So let's get to the function. Uh, so first of all, when you stick to developing a compiler or to compile a script like that, you can read it. I just make a, it in a form of string to put it more explicitly to you. And the first thing that comes to my mind is 
necessary lives, uh, which we have to link to our uh, to, uh, to our GLL that we want to compile is uh, MS core lib system runtime and system core lib system console. I already included because we are using system and some sys uh, some libraries are not mapped so nicely as, as the other. Uh, so it's stated like system collection specialized or generic. So they most of the DLLs that are specified with using directive is stated in .NET folder as system DLL or system uh, uh, and to be got to be aware of like question. Uh, you cannot just I got a stack overflow or looking for that because you got a C sharp exception and it's nothing more to search about. And 90% of exceptions going from here. So we just have to parse the text that we got to syntax tree, as I mentioned before. Uh, we got our string and we parse the text to syntax tree. And later we're telling the compiler to create a some options. Uh, for example, we can allow unsafe code or change the optimization level or et cetera. So output kind as well. So uh, let uh, when we creating a, a compilation, we stating that uh, to C sharp compilation, creating keys, specifying assembly name and options we already defined. Adding the the syntax tree of the compilation we have and getting a local path to, to the assemblies. Uh, we specify where the assembly is and references and uh, declares references also. References is nothing but uh, libraries we have to map. So for example, we have to add to CoreGLL uh, references, uh, pre-compile uh, leaps uh, that we analysis from the code. For example, we have a bit regex abroad. Uh, it maps all the using directives we had, uh, for example, system trading task or etc. And as I mentioned before, some libs does not map and we have to specify it also. So I wrote a little, a little link and, and it does looking for using directives and looking for .NET DLLs to map into our compiler we are declaring. Uh, so we specifying the assembly path for each library. And there are original libs that I stated before. It's just brought into the link here above. And we're getting all using directives here. And let's compile and emit the build. So in Roslyn, you emitting the build right away. And when the result is success, Ray, we got, okay, so if result is not success, sorry, uh, we want to go some, go some DMRX and borrow one uh, rank and to see what happened, not okay, and see what we can improve. And if result is success, Ray, we, the first thing that I wanted is to compile it to DLL, not to, just write a console line as it does here. Uh, so in DLLs, we had a bit trouble because Roslyn is not pointed to work such way and we just seeking, uh, seeking to the stream and we're loading the assembly to the stream and uh, just writing all the bytes from this assembly to specified path and got the DLL right away. And by the way, we have to create a JSON runtime config because a DLL we just specified from memory stream won't work uh, until we specified a runtime objects or framework we are using, name and version. So it has to be alongside with the DLL, we just compile it and save it. Uh, uh, in other criteria, we won't run that. Okay, so let's write some code. Uh, um, okay, so let's specify a variable, for example. As you can see, I am writing keys in the string and let's take this over.
Dois mais cinco. It takes a bit of time because it's a double compilation, compilation of the prog program we are using and compilation of uh, the script we are specified also. So it's hello again and five. So it's a pretty plain and simple script just to show you how it works. Uh, if you get used to it, it's really simple and it's very nice to have that experience because it's very extendable. Okay, so let's we use the script, which is a bit complex. So here we have, for example, directory, get current directory or parallel for, which is more complex in terms of compilation because it's specific DLLs, which we do not have mapped. So if we are specified the using directives in ideas such as writer or visual studio, it got compiled because uh, it has very intelligent uh, compilers, uh, not we have right here, it's very simple, uh, but we can improve it. Okay, so let's action speak louder than any words and let's run it. And right now we will got an exception because the DLL was not found. Yeah, so directory does not exist and parallel does not exist. And let me show you. So for example, here we have to specify the necessary DLLs. We have to attach to the DLL we have compiled. I have them right then. Okay, so this is, mm, okay. So directory is system IO. file system. And system trading tasks. Okay, so we specified those liveries, and what we're gonna do, we're gonna run it and see what happens. If I haven't make any error. Okay, it got compiled and that's run okay. And we have seen uh, some thread slip as well. So after five seconds passed, we seen a message and in uh, terms of comparison to code dump, code dump would uh, just take it away and just run out of this a single stream without any delays. And it's maybe some uh, frustration to you or some something that you got out of requirements. So it's also nice to have. Okay, let me switch to the presentation. Uh, okay. Uh, can you see the presentation? Yes, yeah. Okay, thank you. So let's speak to the, our main point to Blazor WebAssembly. I think you would be more familiar and interesting in it. Uh, okay, so what is WebAssembly? So as our below Wikipedia states, it's a format for executable programs, web, etc., for developing a programs and building them to directly to the web environment. So as for me, uh, WebAssembly is nothing but a way to build a very, uh, very fast application and the API to host the and download the application we have built. Okay. So we got a little meme here for get funny and Blazor WebAssembly props. Uh, it, it is very nice and clean. Uh, you got a riser style syntax and it's really fast because you got a real time application running in your browser, but you got a little loading, loading page, which takes some time to download the application. And that's the main cons we have. Uh, later we discussed more about proxy and cons. And the main, uh, 
plus if the, we're using the same language for the front end, back end, and if you uh, care about your services, also be using .NET or C Sharp. By the way, we can use F Sharp if you want. Uh, there are framework called Bolero, and it just like a wrapper around, uh, around Blazor WebAssembly. And if you're familiar with F Sharp, it's nice experience, and you can use Blazor WebAssembly as well. Uh, the question you might have is that no more JavaScript for front end, and the answer is not quite because right now uh, we don't have such a powerful framework to edit styles or edit CSS or edit a web page right away. We just got uh, the tools to edit the structure for page uh, in terms of .NET and as you can see, see here as a little structure and you would you can ignore uh, JavaScript if you're building some plain and simple societies and you want just to have a nice structure and basic uh, plain C CSS as well. But in fact, if you would have to develop something complex and extendable, you would have to face Blazor Inter. It's not, not such uh, you, you would you wouldn't be so afraid uh, of Blazor Interrupt. Uh, it's it's a nice tool, but it got some uh, cons as well. So because you have to change uh, styles, as I mentioned, you have to use the JavaScript as well. Because from uh, Blazor, you can't just take new style for an object you just created. You have to call JavaScript and change the the dimensions or etc. Yes, you can have styles define it in HTML and change it like a text uh, via Razor syntax, but it's not so clean and nice as I might say. And for the moment, Blazor is nothing more uh, by like, like, uh, like a central dispatcher for the UI. So you can use your shared components, your components uh, to use some nice Razor syntax and to build some nice application with JavaScript inside that controls some, some little uh, moments you have to implement for the nice uh, uh, client experience for the end user. And let's back to the point. Uh, Microsoft suggests us to call uh, JavaScript directly. So we have got here inject uh, JS runtime JS. Maybe you are familiar with Razor syntax. It's just a uh, dependency injection. And if we are using, uh, if we want to use a JavaScript function, we have to call it directly. So we call it JS, invoke async, specifying return type, specifying the function we have uh, stated in that uh, in JavaScript, and the arguments we have. So, uh, but the main uh, cons. Uh, what is the main downside? Uh, JavaScript have to be preloaded and stays loaded. So we are, uh, we are calling it directly. So we do not have some controls over it and do not have uh, power to uh, destroy it or et cetera. So it stays loaded and it may cause some isolation problems and it might disrupt you in the future. Uh, so since we are in WebAssembly, we can manage that. Okay, so let's load it dynamically. So we still injecting uh, injecting uh, IGS runtime and specifying it as GS. But for now, we have uh, a reference, a model, and have a bit of Lambda here. And we are importing a some JS uh, file as a task and awaiting where model will be invoked. And then we are invoking it uh, via model, not by a direct link to the GS, which when we have no control over it. And as I stated before, if it is dynamically, we would want to uh, destroy it as well. Okay, and the best thing is improves uh, performance and gives us isolation. So what's about isolation uh, in the first example? Uh, we can access those JS files from anywhere, from any Razor page or etc. And for now, we have not gone 
we have not got uh, uh, isolation for CSS files as it uh, goes now. For example, you have a page dot razor and you got page dot razor dot CSS and that CSS is isolated, so it can be called from uh, page two razor, for example. But in terms of JavaScript, you can do that because it's a downside for the moment and Microsoft is working uh, on it right now. And the suggestion for now is just to load the Z file in the particular code section in a page and to invoke it. And we, uh, since we have created it, we have to destroy it. And as well as the previous code, but now we are specifying the new uh, function, which comes to, from the base type is dispose async and when the model is null we just disposed it asynchronously and by that uh, javascript won't be won't be bashed to your page and just leave when you swap to the another or you won't be using it anymore so the next topic is monaco editor and we are back to the point uh, maybe you are familiar with Monaco Editor. It's a very powerful tool, which Microsoft, which is developed by Microsoft, and is using a very confident and like Visual Studio experience. And you have got a lot of tools to edit your code, to write your code, to analyze your code, and etc. You are doing in your IDE to develop your amazing solutions. So what it does in common with Blazor. So Blazor is WebAssembly is very new technology. It's got developed in 2021, uh, released. Uh, and so there are very few information to have and frameworks, but it already have a port to Blazor. So if you switch to uh, this site, it's official site of Monaco editor. And we got to, uh, to have it in installed, we have to call NPM and etc. He, and it's supposed to be like a web application in base JS. But in terms of Blazor, uh, we can use a Blazor Monarch framework. It's like a component, not a framework, uh, not quite to say. And it's got ported, and we got all the functions we have in, uh, in Monaco, but in terms of Blazor. And let's see it on the view. So. Here we have uh, Blazor Monaco uh, deployed, and we can choose the team, for example, dark team or I contrast. And we got all the suggestions for it's going to load for JavaScript. So, for example, if I wrote var, t, and etc. So, it got uh, very nice and clean suggestions. Sorry, but since we are seeing your presentation, not, not another. Not a real Monaco. Okay. Seems I haven't shared the screen as well this time. Uh, can you see it now? Mm, yeah, code editor. Okay, sorry. Uh, so we can uh, edit the team or change it to the dark or can have some suggestions, for example, bear. And we got all the suggestions we, we should have. And we can find some codes. Uh, oh, my bad. I think, okay. Uh, I pressed Control R to replace some code. So, for example, if you want to replace if with else, okay, we got it replaced in a web editor in Blazor. So, the next link is Blazor Monaco documentation. However, uh, uh, Blazor Monaco is very new and plain. Uh, we got all the support uh, Monaco editor have for JavaScript. So if we go to Monaco editor, for example, class find match, we got all the properties or indexes we can specify in Blazor. Uh, I'll let us show you an example of that. Let's switch to the presentation right now. Okay. So for Monaco, we have a very poor analysis via uh, for C sharp, we have very poor analysis via Monaco out of box, but we can improve it via Roslyn uh, analysis tools, as I mentioned before. 
to sum up, what is Blazor Wasm right now is it's very scalable, uh, scalable, maintainable. It's got dot .NET on board, also limited. Uh, what I mean in terms of limited, we can create a new task or something else because it, it's it is not uh, it get uh, not a more familiar with uh, console app you maybe have developed before and for example you cannot create a new task or etc it got very strict control over that uh, uh, the next proc uh, is it got reusable components uh, razor syntax maybe you're familiar with model view controller spnet and it's essentially fast. It's really fast because you are running in your own computer using your own uh, powerful or PC, which which is nice. And it's extremely new. It can be a prox and cons at the same time. And I got it to the cons as well because you got less information to search about. And most of all, you got to search uh, on MSDN to GitHub and to develop your own solutions. If you have some uh, issues, which on the first glance may seem very nice and got three points or uh, nothing more. And it's dependable on a good architecture. What I mean, uh, when we're using Blazor, we should write services. We should uh, have a good architecture because the components are very dependable on services. And we are, when we are ejected it, we should have, if you want to have some intersection between them, we have to write our own service to inject it, to configure it and so on. It can be a proc and it can be a con. If you're developing a new application and you get a terms limit, I think it's maybe a bit, uh, a bit of con, but it's a bit of a bug. Uh, to the cons, I have to say that it's limited.net and it's not hosted. And it got long initial loading because you are loading the app to your website. Uh, and it's extremely new and dependable, a good architecture. Okay, let's go. To the next. Uh, the props are nice, uh, but the new uh, next two cons, you must be aware of most of all. So, first of all, it's, you got to be aware of using not to using not.net API. What I mean, uh, we were using Flask, uh, which based on Python. And we have a very bad experience because all the MSDN documentation based on ASP.NET and all the example of usage is based also alongside with ASP.NET. And it's not a uh, con, but you got to be aware of that. So it's not full ready for REST API. Uh, and it got a course issue because this application, it's not hosted at all. It's as well mentioned before, it's an app and all the response uh, headers uh, will be cleaned if you want to connect to your REST API. And there is some ways to get away with that. But as uh, it was, was stated before, you, you should use an ASP.NET for that. And thanks for attention. I think I got some examples in my Chrome. Uh, okay, so, 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 so. Okay, so I mentioned before that I will show you how the editor works and we can specify all the parameters we have. So all these parameters are from uh, now this side, yeah, from Monaco Editor API official documentation. So any property you have found, it is already documented and you can go uh, go with that. And it's, it's very nice. Uh, besides, uh, Blazor is extremely new. So you just get created your editor, specified it and run it from a Razor syntax. And it's, it's very nice and clean. Uh, for example, of Blazor application, uh, let me show you. So uh, it got some long initial loading. Uh, for example, it, let me take a look at this. 
it may seem slow, long, but you got a really, uh, really native experience of using it. Uh, so, for example, let me sign it for this side. Not great account. I just want to show you a default template. Okay. So it's the default template for Blazor or WebAssembly, and we got it covered. So it's fetch data or et cetera. And I think it's high time for Q&A, if you have any questions. Should I stop the sharing? I have a question.